Chapter 6. Gold Doubloons Bob found that his feet had automatically turned to take him out of the cave. In another moment, he and Pete were racing each other for the outside, with Jupiter not far behind. Bob and Pete collided and sprawled headlong at the entrance. Jupiter, however, had turned back. He picked up the flashlight he had dropped and shone it on the skull. Skulls can't talk, he informed the aged death's head, because to talk you need a tongue and a larynx. Therefore, logic tells me you did not speak. Bob and Pete, picking themselves up outside the cave, suddenly heard whoops of laughter. Puzzled and a little embarrassed, they went back inside. Chris Marcos, the boy of the night before, was climbing down from a niche in the rocky wall. Hi, he said, tossing the old skull behind them. Remember me? Of course we remember you, Jupiter said. In fact, I had already deduced it was you because earlier I saw a sailing boat ahead of us that looked like yours. Besides, the voice that spoke was too youthful to be anything but a boy's. I scare you, yes? Chris grinned. You think dead pirate is talking to you? You startled me. Jupiter corrected him. You scared Pete and Bob, though. Bob and Pete looked sheepish. You didn't scare me, Bob said. You scared my legs. I didn't know they were going to run until they did. Me too, Pete agreed. When a skull starts talking, my legs want to be someplace else. Good joke, Chris still radiated merriment. I hope you'll not be mad, though. It is just for fun. No, we're not mad. We've been wanting to talk to you. Let's go outside in the sun. Jupiter led the way outside and all four boys stretched out, their backs against a rock. How did you happen to be here? Jupiter asked the Greek boy. I mean, in the cave and everything, waiting for us. Easy, Chris said. I am sailing and I see boat take you to the pier. I sail round the island and pull up my boat on the beach. I slip through trees, and I see you at the old merry-go-round. I hear you say you're going to explore the cave. I know a shortcut, so I go there first. Then I think of this good joke with an old skull I know is up on one of the rocks. I climb up and hide and wait for you. That explained everything, but Bob wanted to know why Chris was hidden. Why hadn't you come out and said hello earlier? The guard, Chris said simply. That Tom Faraday always chases me away. Everybody chases me away. His cheerful grin was suddenly gone. I have a bad name in town, he said slowly. People think I am a thief because my father and I are poor and different from a foreign country. In town are some people who are not good. They steal things and say Chris the Greek does it. But I do not do it. They believed him. It was an old trick they knew to blame things on an outsider. We believe you're honest, Chris, Pete said. One thing puzzles us, though. How did you find us so quickly last night? Oh, that, Chris said, grinning again. I do some work in a place called Bill's Tavern. I sweep, wash dishes, get two dollars a day. My father and me, we live on that. Mr. Bill is a nice man. Two dollars a day, Bob exclaimed. How can you live on that? Live in an old abandoned fishing shack. No rent, Chris explained soberly. We eat beans and bread and I catch many fish. But father, he is sick. He needs good food. So all the extra time I have, I sail around the bay, hoping to find big treasure. But I am foolish, I guess. Some treasure lies on the bottom of the bay. But what chance has Chris Marcos to find lots of it? You have as much chance as anybody, Pete said. But you are going to tell us how you knew where to look for us. Oh, sure. Yesterday I am washing dishes. I hear men talking in the last booth of tavern. One says, Three detective kids, huh? Well, I'll hand them a surprise. I'll hand them something they won't forget. Then they all laugh. Jupiter pinched his lip thoughtfully. Tell me, Chris, when this man spoke the word hand, did
Did he do it with special emphasis? he asked. He means, did he say hand in some special way? Bob interpreted as the Greek boy looked puzzled. Oh, yes, he does, Chris exclaimed. Each time he says hand, he makes the voice deeper and louder. So when I hear three boys are missing, I think to myself, where could anyone hide three boys? Then I remember the funny way the man says hand. And you deduce that he was referring to the island called the hand? Jupiter exclaimed. That is just what I think. So I sail out as soon as the storm is over. And I find you right here, on the hand. Only... And Chris's face clouded again. Now movie people think I had something to do with it. Nobody believes good of me. We believe in you, Chris, Bob said stoutly. Chris smiled. You believe in me. I show you something. His hand went beneath his pullover and out came a little well-oiled leather sack. Chris loosened the drawstring. Hold your hands out, he said. Close your eyes. Do not look until I say. They obeyed. Something warm and heavy was placed in each boy's palm. When they opened their eyes, each was holding an antique gold piece. Bob examined the worn but still shiny coin. Sixteen fifteen, he exclaimed. Spanish doubloons. Jupiter said, his eyes shining. Real pirate treasure. Golly, Pete said in awe, where did you find them? In the water, lying on sand. There is plenty of treasure in Bay. Captain Wanier, he dumped his whole treasure overboard a long time ago. But now it's all scattered, a little here, a little there. Very hard to find any. I dive and dive. One piece I find off the other end of Skeleton Island, near wreck of nice yacht. But I find two right together in one special little bay, where I think maybe, at that moment, a loud, angry voice interrupted them. Hey you, Chris. What are you doing here? Startled, they looked up. Tom Faraday, the normally good-natured guard, was puffing up the path towards them, his face dark with anger. I told you if I caught you hanging round any more, I'd give you a wailing, Tom Faraday cried. Those are my orders, and he stopped. The boys turned and followed his gaze, but Chris Marcos had disappeared behind a rock as silently as a shadow.